Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, the channel where we are making a computer role-playing game using the free Twine program and the Sugarcube format for Twine. Well, here we are in the game that we've been working on over the last few videos. You'll probably recognize it if you've been following along. And if you're very observant, you might notice that there is a brand new page because I've added an extra um, element to our little miniature game. But I'm not going to talk about that new element today. I'm going to talk about layout. And the reason I'm going to talk about layout is because so far, everything we've been doing is very straightforward if you know the names of the commands. For example, here I've got, and I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see that more easily, I've got uh, a command that displays a picture, and I've got some text, then I've got an if, an else, an else, and an if. Now, again, if you've been following along, you notice that I've made quite a few changes here, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. It's all pretty straightforward, but it's sort of getting, it's getting to the point where it's going to be a bit more complicated and a bit harder to um, see exactly what is being done just by looking at it. And so we're at the stage where we probably want to think about how to make our code look as as uh, clean and clear and easy to read as possible. And the way that I find easiest to read is by leaving spaces between different things. For example, in this case, you notice, and again, I'll zoom in, I've got these blank lines which aren't required by the code. I could get rid of them and sort of scrunch everything up. Oh, I could get rid of them and scrunch everything up like this. But as you can see, I think you'll agree that's probably a little bit harder to a little bit harder to read. So we would probably want to have it you'd probably find that a bit easier to read. But there's a downside, and there's quite a big downside with having blank lines, and that is that by default, Twine doesn't ignore blank lines. It actually takes them as instructions that it should put a blank line in that particular place. And why does it do that? Well, it does that because sometimes that is what you want. Like if I was writing, let's say, let's say I was writing and I had write those three, and let's say I come to the end of the paragraph, well, the probable thing that I'd want to do is do this, leave a blank, leave a blank line, and start a new paragraph. So in that particular case, I want Twine not to ignore that blank line. If it ignored that blank line, it would run the two paragraphs together, and that's not what I want. Um, unfortunately, of course, you can't have it ignore some and notice others because of course it doesn't know which ones you want ignored and which ones you don't. You have to either you have to either have it ignore every blank line or have it take account of every blank line. And by default, it takes account of every blank line. Um, but I'm suggesting to you that you might want to change that to having it ignore every blank line, and that will allow you to spread out your code without having blank lines appear that you don't want appearing. So how do you do that? Well, it's actually quite easy once you know how. You go to this JavaScript button or tab or whatever it is here, and a special page will come up, which is just the the story JavaScript. What that JavaScript is a one of the programming languages that Twine makes use of. JavaScript is often used in uh, web pages. And because the pages that Twine creates are web pages, it, it makes use of JavaScript. Um, you don't really don't need to know JavaScript, but there's like particular useful things that you can do. Um, and this is this is one of them. Um, I'll spell it all out. Capital C O N F I G dot P A W S A G E S dot N O B R equals true. 
and then a semicolon. Uh, does that C have to be a capital? I actually honestly don't know because I just got this from um, someone else and just pasted it straight in and it worked. So I know that this, this version works. Um, if you're interested, try it without and tell me if it works. Um, so what that stands for is, of course, configure uh, passages, N-O-B-R is no break, equals true. And that's just telling it if there's a blank line somewhere in the program, ignore it. Now, that, of course, creates a problem because what if you want a blank line? Well, I'll show you what you do. And again, it's quite straightforward, but you have to you have to do it because otherwise you get think everything running in together. And that is that you have these indicators of a line break. BR, of course, standing for line break. It's the, the equivalent of typing in. Well, it's the equivalent of pressing return. And so we do a bit of text, and then BR BR. We do we do two because text. If we just did one, it would be like this, text, break, more text, and that's not what we want. We want text, break, break, more text. Usually, that's what we want. In this particular case, that is what I want. So, once again, my recommendation to you is to go into JavaScript, Enter this line of code, config.passages.nobr equals true, which tells it to ignore all, all line breaks. And because that means that it'll ignore some line breaks that you want, when you do want a line break, or a blank line rather, do this. Um, what is that? That is less than br greater than. Um, that is actually a piece of HTML. That is the same code as you would use if you were creating a web page, by the way. Or at least it's one way to it's one way to create that. And uh, that will allow you to um, have the lines when you need them, as for example there, but also it will allow you to spread out your code in a way that makes it easier to read. All right, so I hope that was clear and useful, and I hope that you will tune in next time.